recording today. Uh, all right, XR Pub Crawl, welcome. This is January 2024, a whole new year. And I am so excited um, that we have Leslie Shannon from Nokia with us today. Um, and she's going to tell us all about um, her exciting kind of findings at CES. Um, so can't wait to hear about that. If, if you could, whoever's, um, yeah, there we go. If we could meet yourself, if you're, if you're not chatting, that would be very, very helpful. Um, and let me go ahead and, and kick things off with some announcements. Um, I'm going to share my screen and welcome in everybody. Um, I'm going to try to keep us to as tight an hour as I can. It's always an ambitious agenda. Um, so let's dive right in up to the top of my screen. Green here. Okay, so um, for today, uh, we are going to, I've got a few announcements. We're going to talk about there's some big news that's been happening. Um, as some of you may be aware, we're going to chat about that. Um, as quickly as I can, I'm going to get, jump to Leslie Shannon. I have some good questions uh, for her, but we are, you know, please put your questions in chat or even just unmute and ask your questions. Um, these, you know, pub crawls are very interactive and hopefully conversational. Um, I do talk fast, so just slow me down and, you know, ask me questions. Um, and I'm happy to answer. Uh, then after our, our discussion with Leslie, we're gonna go on our pub crawl. And today we've got a very unique opportunity um, with the MIA Academy, MIA, uh, the uh, Mission Impact Academy and their use of a 3D platform uh, for, their, for their communications and education. And so we're gonna chat about that as a, as a uh, use case and kind of get the behind the scenes info on how that went. And I'm really excited to be able to share all of that with you um, all today. So that's the agenda. Let's march forward here and some very quick announcements. So first of all, and most importantly, my birthday, my birthday girl. Um, so some of you may or may not know my, my primary companion is my dog, Betty. I've had her for 15 years and she is absolutely the love of my life. And she looks just like this thing that I got. She really does. Um, she's sleeping right now, right in her little pink princess bed um, here. Otherwise, I would grab her. I really want to grab her and show her, but she'll get mad at me if I do. But anyway, just happy birthday to my princess. Her birthday is actually on Sunday, January 21st, um, 2009 was her birthday. And um, I just want everyone to celebrate her and take a moment. Um, she's very, very special. And anyone that's ever met her knows that she's just like an emblem of joy. She just brings joy to everyone she meets. Um, and she's brought very, very, very huge amounts of joy to my life. And I couldn't be more thrilled to have her in my life. So happy birthday, Betty. Okay, moving on. Um, so I like to do this chat question of the month so that we can get people chatting. And so the, the question is, which immersive platforms would all of you like to explore this year? So we know, you know, the pub crawl, we come together. The idea is to really jump into immersive spaces so that I can help you all learn how, to, you know, what's happening in these spaces to really roll up your sleeves um, and jump in. So there's, you know, hundreds and hundreds of them. And we know this, they're just like, you know, more and more are coming online all the time. So let me know where you want to go and where you want the pub crawl, pub crawl to go this year. Um, so I would love to, to get your thoughts on that. So go ahead and throw that in chat. Um, and I will count that as a vote for where you want to head uh, in, down the road in, in our future pub crawls. Um, all right. All right. Just slow me down or stop me. Uh, six months away, Augmented World Expo, everybody. Um, a couple of things here. So they are accepting volunteers and they do have um, the ability to uh, to submit to get a, a discounted ticket if you're um, in academia. So I'm going to throw those links in chat because I know that that applies to some of you here. Um, so if that's something of interest, the links are there. So you can go ahead and apply to be a volunteer. And I believe when you're a volunteer, you get a free ticket uh, or you can get a discounted ticket if you, again, if you're in academia. And there's just a few questions on that link. But at the end of the day, you know, hopefully we will all come together at AWE. Um, I know, Leslie, you're going. And Leslie, do you want to share a little bit about your experience? Like, so Leslie was on our pub crawl last year uh, at AWE for the um, pre-show floor, floor tour, which was super fun. Uh, and I'm hoping to do that again this year. But um, how long have you been doing AWE, Leslie? Well, uh, not that long, actually. I've only been there the last two times, um, but uh, but it's 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 phenomenal. It's it really is the best in person XR, if that's not counterintuitive, um, uh, uh, event 
of the entire global calendar. It's the place where there's the most people, the most demos, the most hands-on ability to actually experience the technology. And it's everybody from the big guys to the small guys. And yeah, it's the best. Oh, I love it. I love that endorsement. And I couldn't couldn't have said it better myself. Um, yeah, it's really grown up. I've been going for, I think, almost 10 years now. And it's it's really grown, come into its own in a, in a beautiful way. So um, yeah, so hopefully you all be there with us and, and, and we'll have fun. Um, okay, what's next? What's next? Okay, um, so our next pub crawl uh, will be February 16th. The pub crawl is every third Friday of the month at noon. And um, next uh, month, I've invited um, Martin Petkov, who is actually the author of the textbook that I'm using in my XR marketing course to come in. He's, he's created an entire series called, um, it's a Metaverse AI book series. There's three books. You can find them on uh, Amazon. And I'll put the links in the in the show notes here. But he's going to come on and he's going to chat with us. He wrote he wrote the definitive guide uh, to navigating um, this opportunity. So very excited. And those of you that are currently taking my experiential marketing course, you um, this is your textbook. And so the author of your textbook will be here next February to chat with you all. So um, that should be super fun. Uh, finally, if you haven't already, I do put out an XR AI marketing brief. Um, it, it's about once or twice a month, depending upon my course load and how many courses I'm teaching. Uh, but it's 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 uh, you know lots of great information. Um, I we have reminders of our in-person <clears throat> meetings and our virtual meetings, along with um, editorial for myself on kind of trends and news items and. Um, that's a, a LinkedIn newsletter and you can just sign up, you can scan or, or use that link XR AI brief to, to find that. And I will also put that in show notes. Okay, you guys, there's been some big news happening. First thing, um, and this is a question for everybody, who is using Microsoft's Copilot that has been released now to the general public, uh, 20 bucks, we'll get it for you. And I know some of my students have been using it. So who, anyone wanna share? Yes, Claire, please fill us in. I know you've been using this, talk to us. I actually primarily use ChatGPT, but I did use Copilot um, two days ago to create a PowerPoint presentation. Um, I'd already done an assignment for your class, so I just copied and pasted it straight from Canvas, dropped it in an online Word document that's sort of the equivalent of Google Docs, and did an export as PDF. And it, you know, it was just... It, or it was a, an export as PowerPoint and it was just as quick as export as PDF. Like it, you know, it was like in a snap. Um, some of it looked kind of crappy. It <laughs> generated its own like clip art basically. And some of it, you know, background art, some of it looked not bad. And for each slide, you had the choice of a couple different layouts, um, but pretty generic. I ended up keeping a lot of them, but I had my own art and the art didn't import from the Word document. So I just kind of pasted my own art in, but start to finish, it took about 15 minutes and that was posting, uh, you know, bringing in about 10 images. So couldn't, couldn't really have gone any faster. Like literally, if you were fine with it looking kind of crappy, you could do it in a minute. Yeah, thanks, Claire. And, and this, what you're seeing on the screen here is um, what it looks like, how it integrates in. So um, you, you, when you sign up and can get it, there's a, there's a little co-pilot up here, co-pilot tab right next to designer um, with an interface that looks like this that really allows you to have this sort of chat feature to help you. Um, and then this, it, you know, when you sign up, you also get access to this co-pilot um, interface that's very much like chat. GPT 4.4, chat uh, 0. 0.0. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see if this co-pilot feature, this 20 bucks a month, starts cannibalizing some of OpenAI's 20 bucks a month subscribers like myself. Like I, you know, I subscribe, right? Sam, you got something yeah, for me? Yeah, that's what was my, I was like, why, if, if it's using chat GPT 4, why am I paying OpenAI $20 to not get all the other co I mean, is there a good reason not to switch? It's too soon to tell. Yeah, and okay. I have to say this yeah. this copilot screen, this is the Bing screen. This is it just says mm -hmm. copilot on top. This is exactly the Bing screen. Yes. Yeah. And, with the, and with the Bing image, I guess because I use the Bing image creator a little bit, and and Dolly is, I think, uh, uh far and above that in many ways. But um 
but if Copilot uses, I mean, does it use Dolly the, the same way I would get into like uh, ChatGPT Pro? Yeah, I, I think it is using Dolly three um, because that's that's what Bing has been using. Um, I think you know if you Bing provided users access to Dolly three before a lot of others. So yeah, I mean, and at this point, um, I'm not ready to give up ChatGPT four yet. Um, one thing that I'll say that's really interesting um, are these are the so there are plugins. So like the other thing you can see here, let me make this bigger for everyone. So um, this plugin feature right, um, is really interesting. So, you know, in the same way that ChatGPT4 has, um, I'm going to call them, you know, extensions that overlay, uh, so does Microsoft now. They have these plugins. So how the, pl how the Microsoft plugin marketplace differs from ChatGPT's Chat OpenAI marketplace is still uh, a little bit of a, a mystery, I think, Sam. Um, but I think there could still be some tools that overlay uh, chat GPT-4 that maybe Microsoft will not be using that could still be very valuable, um, but it's just too soon to tell. So good questions. You know, Lisa, these these plugins here, these are the same plugins that you get in ChatGPT. But what's missing is the separate access to the ChatGPT marketplace, which is where there's the whole community of people creating their own. So maybe that's where ChatGPT is hoping to differentiate. Yes, and I so I have that tool AIPRM, which I just chatted about, which is amazing, and it is it's an amazing community of GPT creators and sharers, um, and it really you know I just released my video, the power of the collective. It really enables you to leverage all these amazing GPTs that marketers and communicators and all these people are are creating. So um, too soon to tell, and, and we could probably spend the entire hour on this. So <laughs> uh, if you have other questions or thoughts, throw them in chat or you know. Uh, but it, it's a it's a bit it was a big release and I'm excited that it finally happened. The next big announcement rah, rah, is Apple Vision Pro. Um, anybody here been used the Pro yet? Anybody here ordered the Pro yet? Sam did. Oh my, are you guys insane? How are you in four? So this is a, it's crazy. Thirty five hundred dollars. Like where is that money coming from? The fact that my, I, I'm going to be one of those people. My parents are more excited about getting me outfitted in these things than I am sometimes. Oh, so I, uh, oh my I have, gosh. Uh, lovely benefactors is where it comes from for me. You guys are going to be my new best friends. Um, <laughs> it's it's complicated too. It's not easy. Like you, if you look over here at the tips, you know, they there's stuff you got to do. These things are customized for your face. Um, and if you have prescription glasses, even more so. So this is not an easy, you know, like buying a quest off the shelf situation, which is interesting. Um, I, I mean, I've, again, we could spend an entire show on this and maybe we will. Um, I think that this is going to be a really good stepping stone to eventually coming up with something that's going to be amazing, but it's not this. So absolutely. So I don't, I mean right? So I don't know how I don't know I don't I'm a, I'm a you know I'm a poor professor so 3500 bucks of my own money is is a lot uh to put into something that's a stepping stone that being said I know that I'll be getting access to one um through the lab and I can't wait to try it out and I've read a lot of reviews of people that have tried it out um so I have a lot of thoughts there but it's it, yeah what have you heard Sam Uh I've heard well for one thing the the buying process <clears throat> it sounds super weird and 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 complicated and it really wasn't i mean i did okay. it sitting in bed on my phone like it was <laughs> good it is more complicated than picking something up off the shelf but only barely and i think you're right what i'm hearing for the most part is i mean it's the same as when the first ipod came out or the first ipad came out or the first what you know, iphone out or how about, i mean i remember like, the first iphone okay there's, that's there's how old i am pull up reviews that are like there's no buttons on the phone. You expect me to type on a flat screen. This is dead in the water. The iPad comes out. They're like, what am I going to do on an iPad? I can't do on a phone dead in the water. And it's like, no, it wasn't. I mean, they weren't great at the beginning, but they were transformative stepping absolutely. stones, like you said. So yes. yeah, absolutely. And I also think Apple this is all. essentially them letting us fund their R and D for a minute with yeah. a public beta um, and getting, you know, this mass uh, uh, data from everybody, but um, happy, happy to do my part, I guess. That's exactly what this is, Sam, and it's super smart. I think they, I think I'm I'm not saying it's not a, a good move. I think it's a great move, and it will definitely like it drive us all more 
closer to this idea of giving up our these you know less intuitive screens that are like causing us all sorts of like issues like you know pigeon neck and all these things like we're going to eventually get to a place where we're not going to have that anymore and i can't wait um i think this get, that get, gets us one step closer um anyone else how about the vision piece because i do wear glasses like did you did you have to get um submit your subscription your prescription no, I, well, I don't wear glasses really. I mean, yeah. I, like, I have a super teeny tiny prescription for nighttime driving and stuff. So I didn't even bother with the extra cost because they're just magnetic clips. So you can, you know, in a year, if I lose all of my vision somehow, I can buy them and, and stick them in there or something like that. So, okay. So it's, it's a, it might be an add on. I mean, de definitely for me, that would be important because I, um, I, you know, anyway, I'm old and my, I, I need glasses. So just, it's just another consideration. Um, okay, awesome. Let's power forward. Um, the other thing I wanted to hit on, I, I did find a great, um, well, I, I thought it was a very informative article um, where they talked to a lot of the friend, friends of the pub crawl on kind of CES, and we're going to get to Leslie in about one more minute here. Um, but the key takeaways of this article, and the link is in, in chat, um, there were a few interesting things. They did talk about some of the companies that we already saw at AWE and what they were releasing, like um, those the Xreal AR glasses that we got to demo, and then also the AR laptop that we got to demo at AWE that we chatted about. Um, you know, I don't know if they've made, and Leslie, maybe you can let us know, but you know, if they haven't made significant improvements in those two. Um, products, you know, honestly, I wasn't that impressed with what we saw at AWE. It's not something I would run out and buy. Um, but the, you know, the interesting trend here, and you, know, Kathy Hackle, who we, I think, most of us have have know, um, you know, she's basically saying that that you know this this idea um, of these of AI is really going to be the building blocks for our three D centric computing needs, and I think that that is true, um, and will help exponentially, you know, kind of grow what we're able to do uh, within these 3D spaces. You know, AI is just going to empower us and, and to, to, to more quickly get there. Um, but we're just not quite there yet. And then the final thing is, so um, this was also, I thought, a very interesting quote from this article. Um, which is about embedding, and this is a trend that I that I think is um, I've been chatting about, but it's this idea of being, you know, take you know, these standalone AI tools are going to go away. I mean, just like, you know, so it's all about bringing the tools into your current workspace. And I think that's what this quote is really um, kind of talking about. This, um, I began to assume that everything had AI embedded in the solution. Um, you know, most everything would somehow leverage the ability to learn and improve performance in some way. When AI was presented as the primary benefit, I was a little skeptical of their understanding of the technology, which I just thought was a really interesting quote. I think we're already seeing some of these tools that are just, you know, just AI, you know, tools that overlay, say, a chat GPT-4, we see them becoming less and less relevant already. So um, I think it's a warning. You know, I would my warning is don't invest a lot of time, resources, team training into these tools that overlay a GPT, because I think that their life cycle is very short. Um, so that's all, that's what I'll say there. I think it's the, the most important trend for, for us to think about. And as we think about you know, Copilot and Microsoft bringing these in, you know, everything's doing, like Canva is another really good example. Like all my students, undergrad students use Canva, and now Canva is very smartly bringing in generative AI so that now all my students can just use Canva to go get their, you know, gen AI images and all these things. So I think companies that are using this technology in a smart way is really being able to bring it in and, and intuitively include it in what they're offering already. And we're seeing that happen. Okay, questions, thoughts on any of that? I talk so fast. Okay, let's go. I'm, I'm very eager. Um, so, so Leslie uh, Shannon, the way I first heard about Leslie is that she puts out um, an amazingly valuable um, word of mouth only slide deck. I'm, I'm, it's a curated um, list of technology trends in this space. Um, I have used them and cited them as sources here in the pub crawl multiple times. Um, and Nathan Bowser from AWE shared that with me and I just fell in love with Leslie immediately as soon as I got her first deck. I knew that she um, really understood the space and, and um, I, you know, I, I just loved the, the, the information and the insight she brought to the table. So I'm thrilled to have her here. She's also authored two books um, on the subject, and I couldn't be more pleased to have her. And um, welcome, Leslie. And I'm going to go ahead and um, 
kind of set you up now. You're welcome to do an intro over and above that. But I think everyone is dying to know coming out of CES, uh, what you saw as the most important trends um, that marketers need to keep their eye on. And we'd love to hear hear from you on that. And I'm going to stop the share since no one needs to see that question so we can see your lovely face. Hi, Nathan. Okay. <laughs> hey, hello, Nathan. Hey, and and everybody. Um, I'm Leslie Shannon. I'm the head of trend scouting for Nokia. And, um, and so I'm located in Silicon Valley. And for the last eight years, I've been doing this job and our our focus is connectivity. So I'm looking at new technologies that are going to change how connectivity is used somehow. And without going into the details, that means I've been looking at XR quite closely for the last six years or so. And um, and I'm, you know, I'm a fan. I'm a heavy user. I uh, I do all my fitness in VR and I have done for the last five years. And um, <laughs> and um, oh, yeah, so so um, so CES has. So, but, but, but it's not the only thing I'm looking at. And so like the rest of you, I mean, I think I love the fact that this is called XR pub crawl, but we've just spent the last 20 minutes talking about and thinking about a lot of gen AI. And, you know, because we are actually, these are all in the same space. And those of us who are interested in these new technologies and what they can do for us as human beings, it's all actually converging. And that's exactly what I saw at CES. One of the most, um, so a couple of things really stood out that I didn't really see highlighted too much in the um, uh, in the news coverage. So one was BMW's AR um, uh, uh, for drivers, right, for drivers. So they were using X-Real glasses, and they had a BMW, and they had a BMW person driving the car. I was sitting in the front passenger seat, and there was an X-Real guy in the back seat <laughs> manipulating the XR stuff. And so I put on a pair of X-Real glasses, and what they had done was they had actually given the experience of both what the driver would see, potentially, and what a passenger could see. So what the driver was getting was information, and what the passenger view was, was more games uh, or, or other entertainment kinds of things. It was, I mean, you can imagine what this is, but seeing it, it was mind blowing. Mm. Okay, so because they actually took us out on the streets of Las Vegas. And so we're driving around this poor guy driving in this loop for four <laughs> days. I mean, he was, you know, he must have gone insane <laughs> by the end of it. But, you know, I got him on the first day when he was still in a good mood. And, um, and so what they did was they took the same kinds of visual elements that you would get in, say, a Google, um, you know, street view. Here's the, 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 you know, uh, the turn, you know, turn here, this kind of stuff, you know, big kind of chunky arrows sitting there in your space. Well, and they made that appear out in the world outside the car. And it was so fantastic. Um, you know, and here's, here's a little thing that comes up where there's a crosswalk. Here's a little thing that comes up. Um, uh, oh, there's a stop sign here. And, 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 oh, here, here, he purposely got the car quite near to one of the barriers at one point. And, oh, you know, you the front corner of your car is about to hit a barrier. So this big kind of like thing comes up. So you don't miss that. I have a 16 year old son. He just got his driver's license. He scratched my car twice. I, I need these. I need these right now. So I talked to them about, you know, clearly there's going to need to be a lot of regulation before anybody is going to agree to have drivers wear these things. They said, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll work on that. But the the experience was spectacular. The other thing that I saw, and, and that's and you know that's that's a bringing together of XR and location, um, and of course there's a lot of AI underneath it. Where there was the best marriage of XR and generative AI that I saw was this was something okay. <clears throat> There's a lot of stuff that happens in the big showrooms at CES, but there's also a lot of companies that have just hotel rooms and, and you have to, you know, you have to know. And so, so I was going to see a French company named Prophecy and that's Prophecy spelled S-E-E -E at the end. And what they do is super low powered sensors. And um, that's what, cause I'm, I'm interested in the building blocks, right? As far as like long-term XR right now, we're in the infrastructure stage. We're still figuring out how the hardware is going to go for consumer grade XR glasses, right? And so, and I'm like, oh, low power sensor, that sounds good. So I go in and they show me their stuff and it's really good. But they had a couple of other companies in their space. And one of them was a Silicon Valley based company that's just down the road for me and I got to go see them called Zin Labs. I'd never heard of them, Z-I-N-N -N Labs. And what they were doing so it's this guy named Kevin Boyle. I think he's the CEO. Um, they had these 
I think they had designed these to work with the MetaQuest um, Ray-Ban glasses, where which of course are going to be adding that AR, sorry, that AI audio later in the year. But the demo they gave me was on 3D printed glasses. So here I'm wearing these 3D printed glasses, and um, and then they had the prophecy. Um, uh, low powered sensors in there to do eye tracking. And what it was doing was following my eyes. And then, and then they had the audio generative AI interaction, which, which with, I believe, chat GPT. It was a fucking superpower <laughs> to be able to, for, sorry about the language, but it was like, oh, to be able to look at something and, and, and just say, just ask a question about it. And so the, the things that they held up were things like, Here's um, you know, here here here's a picture of Starry Night. So you just look at it and go, who painted this? You don't need to say any more than that. It just follows your eyes. You know, there's a Dali painting right next to it because oh, Vincent van Gogh. And and then to look at a menu, and their menu was in Turkish. And to look at the name of a dish and without any other, just your eyes are falling on the name of the dish, and you go, is this spicy? And then you get an answer. Eye tracking plus audio, it was phenomenal. And it made me realize, because I know that XR and Gen AI are coming together, obviously. But it made me realize that, okay, audio is the first step, for sure. And we're going to get the video later. But audio, I'd really been dismissing it. Audio plus eye tracking is magic. This is this is going to be big. This is wow. going to be big. I love that insight, Leslie. Thank you so yeah. much for sharing. Um, Anything else that you want to report? There was a lot, but what you said about, you know, kind of the standard bearers, uh, you know, yeah, the changes were not the kind of thing would make you go, you know, the, the BMW and the Zen Labs were the things that really stood out. Um, the other things that don't really have anything to do with what we're interested in, the transparent TVs from Samsung and LG were so beautiful. <laughs> and then there was a lot of, um, there was a, a oh actually I should mention this there was a lot of using AI to bring together many services into one unit. Uh, Rabbit of course released their screenless thing that's supposed to do that kind of thing. I didn't get to see that. I was looking for them. I don't know where they were at CES. Um, but also Samsung and LG both had little devices. Samsung's is called Bali that rolls around after you at home, and it was meant to be a voice interface to just kind of everything, plus a little bit of a companion with a little bit of a personality. Whether this kind of thing takes off or not, I have no idea. But the idea is to use AI to stitch everything together so you have one interface for everything. And that's the same thing that's rabbits after. So I think we're going to see an increasing amount of AI as your personal agent. And that's going to take a lot of forms. And, you know, so so we saw a screenless thing in your pocket and ball that rolls around after you, both at CES this year. And so, you know, I think we're going to, yeah, it's the, you know, sky's the limit on this one. Yeah, I love that, Leslie. And I, I believe I talked about this in a previous um, pub crawl, but ChatGPT, if you have their mobile app, they've got this audio feature. Yes, um, yes. With, and I've been talking to my phone a lot. I've been, I call her Isis. I've been talking to Isis a lot and she's amazing. Like she, it's amazing what she can do. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't even want to get started, but it, 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 she's super fast, I mean, the closest thing to natural talking to someone that I've ever engaged with um, and just immediately finds whatever the hell I'm asking her. I've I have the voice customized to what I want. Um, I've instructed her to act a certain way and she's amazing. Like, and I think that, you know, the, you know, the reason I'm so bullish on chat GPT for, and that is that, you know, open AI, like it or not, and their partnership with Microsoft really is empowering them to be the linchpin that brings a lot of this together. So I right. think they, you know, they will do something. They're going to, they're going to just, you know, make that better and better and better um, and create that, you know, the, the, the AI, the AI companion that we all need and want and love. I, I feel like they're probably the ones positioned to probably get that right. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how, how that develops. And you know what? This is this is what Alexa could have been. Yes. Thank you. Well, and you know, poor Alexa. She's been really. Um, I've been. You know, I haven't been talking to Alexa that much anymore. And you know, not at all. And now her little like 
can you want me to add that to your shopping cart? And it's like, no. I mean, I know like, Alexa. I know Alexa's like the little Shetland pony, and now we've actually seen thoroughbreds. And yes, you know, like, I, I know. You know, we're growing well, up, and I, we if, might have I, to I think leave AWS, the childhood. I'd, I'd be scared. You know, I mean, Amazon has has some 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 work to do. It'll be really interesting. It's gonna it's gonna be interesting to see how the landscape develops. But these are amazing insights. So thank you so much. Um, all right. Well, let's transition to our next piece of this. And of hey. course, if it, um, hi Sasha, do you have a question? Oh, sorry. No, I'm just. <laughs> Hi. I don't uh, have a yeah. question. I'm. I'm oh. now. I'm testing out the the other side of Alexa, which is a human. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> oh no, no, no worries at all. No worries at all. Um, if you, if any, does anybody have any questions before we we hop into our our um use case here? Oh, I do want to say um, yes. Thank you so much for for promoting my 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 the PowerPoint slides that I send out every so yes. often. Um, and uh, if you're interested in that, just send me an email. It's leslie.shannon at nokia.com. These are the slides that I make when I see something interesting, like the stuff that I just talked about. I'll be making slides about that. Um, and I just, every so often, I just send them out to whoever's interested because, you know, rising tide lifts all boats. So, so just personal. And, you know, the, <laughs> I would say when I was talking to Lisa beforehand, I'm like, yeah, it's kind of organic. You know, I just have this list and I send stuff out and she's like, no, 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 it's exclusive word of mouth only. You got to get better on the marketing. And Lisa, you're right. I got to, I got to change how They're I talk so about this. Good. They're so good. <laughs> so um, everyone, all my students sign up and get them because they're amazing. Um, Kate, I see you have a hand up. Hi guys, Leslie, the use cases for all of the tech that you were just saying in healthcare like it, I work in healthcare, so it was bringing me to the healthcare space. I have a patient that is completely blind, and I just know that envision those those glasses right with audible to be able to see your surroundings like is going to be a game changer. Um, she is currently on the wait list for a seeing eye dog, and a seeing eye dog is thirty thousand dollars in the U.S. And so, I just wow. and then obviously the dog doesn't live forever, so <laughs> I just know that it's going to be a game changer in the healthcare setting. So that's awesome to hear. Oh, Thanks, Kate. Kate. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. And, and just with so, so, so much. Um, yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. Kate, there's an <laughs> app called Be My Eyes that does some similar work uh, as, as what Leslie described. Uh, and I saw a use case recently of the very inexpensive uh, Zap box um, using Be My Eyes and... Um, <clears throat> some of their uh, uh, accessible QR codes to help uh, a completely blind person cook a uh, cook chicken for dinner uh, and uh, using QR codes and recipes and audio assistance, uh, we're able to totally like um, uh, be completely sufficient with something that you wouldn't expect um, a blind person might. So. That's yeah, awesome. actually, Nathan, you're right. Zapbox really killed it at AWE last year. Um, yeah, they've got really great products for the for the blind. Yeah. Um, okay, let me go ahead and share my screen again. These are this is awesome. I'm I'm trying to um, put links in in chat of, of all these amazing technology uh, you know startups that have been been mentioned. So links are there. Um, and let's go into um, talk about this. Um, let's crawl, everybody. Uh, so, um, Leslie, do you want to actually you want to start by giving us a little bit of a setup around um, Mia and uh, Third Academy and chat um, us through kind of how you learned about this and, and your experience? I think that'd be a really good starting place. Yeah, sure. So there's really two entities that are completely separate from each other that we're we're talking about here. One is the Mission Impact Academy, and the other is Third Academy. Two academies here, um, and so Mission Impact Academy is um, a, a particular group. It's female-led, female-run, and specifically offers AI generative AI training for non-technical women. And, um, and so they run these courses that are, you know, they're not, they're not free. Um, but I took one of them, I was in the first cohort and, and that was actually the thing that gave me the introduction and the leg up into what's going on in generative AI and, and how to use it. And, and it was very beautifully put together, carefully curated, um, a really spectacular experience and absolutely worth every penny <laughs> that it cost. So yeah, I paid for that. No, you didn't pay for it. Mm -hmm. um, but then one of the reason that I'm talking about this here, I'm not, you know, this is not a paid announcement here or anything. Um, 
is that they then also used XR and which I thought was absolutely beautiful. Oh, Louisa, yes, thank you. Yeah, they do have a free learning platform, which is totally worth checking out um, for, you know, particularly for getting your feet wet in generative AI. Um, and then, uh, uh, then they used Third Academy, which is a XR platform where we all got together to actually have more of a presence because uh, I think there were like 75 students from literally all over the world. I think 75 students from 25 countries. It was something, you know, one of those situations. And, and in the training, you know, the trainers are speaking to us and so we're not getting to interact, but they would have, they had three points throughout the course of the six week session moments where we all went into Third Academy and we were able to actually interact with, with each other. And particularly for our graduation, um, we went into Third Academy and they, one of the projects had been to, um, they'd given us some prompts and to create some images to go with those prompts. And then we submitted them and then they had them running on screens around the Third Academy area. And it was such it was so natural. I mean, we're all, you know, I'm sure we're all XR veterans uh, here in this particular area, but to have the screens with the, the results and to be able to talk about them and everything, it, it really personalized the experience in a way that, you know, taking a Zoom course just doesn't just doesn't do. And, and the ability to actually, and what made this different was the ability to actually share the work that each of us had been doing individually um, and to have that visually there. And so we could talk about the works as, as they kind of cycled through in the slideshows. So Leslie, share your screen. So, um, okay. Emily, yeah. So we're going to go on the tour um, and this is what we're going to call a walled garden for, for those of you that are you know doing marketing with me, we've there are a few different flavors of these virtual spaces. Some are open to the public like Roblox or Spatial or Fortnite. Um, and others are what we would call private walled gardens that are um, infrastructure that um, are a little bit harder to access or not open to the public. Um, and so th this is uh, a walled garden that um, we are going to be shown. Unfortunately, it's not open enough for all of us to, to jump in, um, but we've got our beautiful tour guide, Leslie, who's gonna take us on a tour of this. and. Um, um, and we also have uh, representatives here from Mia and also from Third Academy to talk about that partnership. And I would love to talk a little bit about, I mean, and this is, you know, a lot of this is marketing and communications. Um, and, you know, we're teasing a lot of things out here, right? I mean, there is, you know, immersive education, there is VR education. But what we're talking about in this example was building community. You know, this platform was used for building community. And that is something that marketers is, is like the holy grail for us in a lot of ways, building a nice, you know, a connection with our audience and allowing them to build connections among themselves. And it's a huge goal um, for many marketers out there. And so this is kind of where we're at, right? We're in this time where we can have these breakthrough technologies to help bring people together in new ways, which is, you know, exactly my, my philosophy is what I've been doing for the last 20 years. Um, and so I thought this would be a lovely opportunity for us to see the space. So that being said, Leslie, what, do you want to kind of kick things off here and you can kind of hear, you can see, everybody can see where we are and there's Andrew wave. Hi, Andrew. Hey, Andrew. Yeah. So for the, so as Lisa explained, this is, this is a closed garden. And so what we're doing is you guys are just seeing it through my Zoom and my audio is only working here in the Zoom. And so, um, so Andrew or Melissa or anybody who's also visible there in Third Academy, if you want to say something, you're going to need to say it through the Zoom. So, um, so, so here's kind of the central point and, you know, we're all, we're all, you know, we all know XR spaces here. One of the things that I love, I, it, it, it really kills me when I like an XR space only does things that are possible in the physical world. And, and so, so this one I actually love because we've, you know, the, the, the plants, I really, really love the emphasis on the plants. That's just a personal thing for me. Um, but uh, we actually had, um, so at our graduation party, we spent some time upstairs, we'll go in a bit, but then we kind of came down and we were hanging around the ice cream parlor here and we we're all sitting in the chairs and they had a big screen here um, that's not running today, but it's where they were cycling through the, the um, 
uh, the, the, the creations that we had all made as a result of the prompts. And so we'd all, of course, been working with the same prompts. And it was just so fantastic to see how much variation there was and what people were thinking and what they chose. And then and everybody was talking about, yeah, I was trying to get it to the, do this and it went that way instead. And, you know, so, you know, oh, and there's there's Andrew sitting down. Mm -hmm. So um, so somebody from and, and remember, this is representing two separate companies, right? The third Academy is the site and and Mission Impact Academy or MIA that was the course that I took that actually used this for some of their um, uh, some of their uh, uh, areas, uh, the presence part of their course. And so, does anybody who's on the call from Mia or um, Third Academy want to want to say a few words? Third Academy. Hi, hey, Stacy. Stacey. Hi. Hi. Um, so yeah, thanks for the accolades. Really great to see it um, here today on the big screen. Um, and one of the things that was really important to us and that's consistently important to us is that ability to kind of suspend disbelief when you're in our world. Um, and also the ability to orient yourself in a way that's kind of natural and makes sense uh, to the physical. And we're finding that that's been really um, quite helpful when it comes to people new to the environment. Additionally, as you saw, Jenny's, um, we have different activations in different campuses that are four brands where you can order products in real time. Um, in the Jenny's uh, location, you can also play ice cream related games and have a place to socialize. Additionally, as you walk through the space, you'll see Mission Impact Academy, me as a space. Um, but additionally, you also see Crypto Girls Club, you'll see Crypto Equalizers and a variety of different um, groups that are from all over the world. And we really wanted to set up what we were doing as, even though it's a walled garden, as once you're inside, you're really with people in the tech and the XR world that want to uh, network and to share their knowledge and their skills to evolve each other's um, endeavors. Um, as you're walking through, you're actually seeing in some of the other spaces, um, marketplaces, meeting rooms, conference rooms, and even a meditation space. Awesome, Stacy. Thank you so much. So talk to I. Um, this is a, a template that I I have seen before, and I'm curious to to understand kind of your clients how they how easy is it? Um, or or talk to me a little bit about the the process of how you work with your clients to create a space like this. Yeah. So we are not a metaverse uh, development company. We use metaverses as tools. We actually have uh, developed a platform that is meant for networking, education, and leveling professionally. And what I mean by that is organizations like Mia have the capacity to um, create a community on our platform to offer courses, but also offer on-chain credentials. So your wallet essentially through our ecosystem becomes your resume. We have an auto-matching recruiter system, which can match you to operate opportunities within Web3 and XR based upon those credentials you have in your wallet. Additionally, you can add content, you can meet other people, and you can jump into a co-working space in the metaverse. So we're really looking at something akin to a LinkedIn with a lot of XR and um, blockchain-based functionality. Do you require that your users have a wallet, a crypto wallet? No. Uh Absolutely not. We really believe that at the heart and soul of this, the goal is to offer tech education opportunities globally at a very reasonable price, aggregating the best content from the best players in the space, Mia being one of them, and that the base user should be an everyday person who's, no who's not experienced Web3. Um, but additionally, we also know that if you are in XR and Web3, um, in the AI space, you know that technology is evolving very rapidly. And so we really wanted to build a platform where you could find the best, the greatest, and latest thinkers in the space and the best content in the space for those needs that you have. Because as, as much of an expert as any of us are, there's, we have blind spots. And we really wanted to build this not only for the new people to this space, but for those moments where you have a blind spot and you need just a little bit of extra um, information or, you know, uh, another uh, company to source for your Stacey, needs. Stacey, what do you find are the um, KPIs that your clients are most interested in? And if you have any specific marketing and comms related examples, that would be super helpful. Yeah. So the key KPIs that most people are interested in really have to do with the retention of uh, users, 
the sales of additional content and virtual goods, um, as well as their ability to offer new products and services. Um, and when you talk about a um, client or a user, it can be an individual, it could be a company, or it could be a Web3 community group. We really built this so that you can come and amplify whatever mechanism you're currently using to um, gain revenue, but also perhaps find new ways. So as an individual, you could offer your services as a consultant or as a freelancer. As a company, you can build out a mechanism to sell your products virtually, to have a virtual um, booth. Or if you're a conference, we actually have in our spaces. So nice. that you I love that. I love typically what we're doing here. The, this is pretty. Yeah, this is the presentation space. We're amplifying the virtual. That's great. Isis would love that. Should get an embodied version of Isis in there. That's uh, which um. That's, and let's transfer that. That's a great transition um over to Louisa, who's with Mia. Um, Louisa, now you all were the you know clients for this and and had your space here. Um, I would love for you to talk a little bit about your virtual AI assistance. Um, I noticed that you have that as an offering, and would love to chat uh about that and how that's worked for you, or what has the experience been trying to roll out um virtual chat assistance to your to your community. Hello, Lisa. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure um, we're talking about the same thing. We don't have an AI assistant. <laughs> oh, if you so on your um, let me. OK, uh, I, I yeah. see what you're saying. Oh, uh, so we yeah. have um, uh, AI guides. So yes. what we do, is we're building uh, guides with a company called Colossian, if you know. Um, so we have AI avatars that are very realistic. And we use them to shoot some videos to guide our community members throughout our learning space. And so, yeah, that's it. But they're not AI uh, text assistants. No, right. So they're they're AI guides. But how, how is that yeah. going? Are you finding that people are using them and finding them to be helpful? Uh, we shoot videos with them. So they're great to have an automated um, uh, video production. Uh, so in that sense, I'm operations and projects manager, so I love automation. Um, so anything that can be automatized, I love. But we would also obviously use uh, real people in our videos uh, whenever we can. People like Kate, who's here today, because I think AI is still not at that point where it can deliver emotions that we would like to deliver to our community members. Yeah, exactly. It's hard. It, it definitely is mm -hmm. challenging. To uh, There's Uncanny Valley still and all yes. sorts of issues with that. So thank you, Louisa. How about, talk to me about um, your experience with this platform and the, you mentioned yeah. OKRs. That's that's some, that's some language I understand. Talk to me about those and um, how, how this activation went uh, for you from a kind of performance standpoint. Performance standpoint, um, the NPS we've had for the metaverse uh, field trips and sessions were absolutely stellar. Uh, we've had very, very good feedback from the 70 participants. I don't think anyone has not enjoyed it. So as uh, Leslie mentioned, we were over 70 participants from 20 countries. So it was a real challenge for us to make that uh, educational program you know, alive. We don't want them to be bored in Zoom lives and like, because it was twice a week for six weeks. We don't want them to be bored. We don't want them to um, fall out. That's also a, a, pro a problem I've had over the years in, in programs and courses. Um, I myself have stopped taking my courses that were like too long and, and that's a real problem, drop out. So I feel like this, I gave them um, something to look up for. They started first week, they knew that they had an art show coming out at graduation. They knew that they were going to meet kind of live in this space. And I think that really brought out something special. Oh, I love that, Louisa. And and let, may I, so um, why did you, or maybe, maybe a better question is, would you consider building a presence in a public virtual world um, and maybe go over kind of your decisions to not go that route with, with this project? So for this project, it was very simple. It's a paid program. <laughs> so it's an exclusive space that was reserved for our people, for our students, our participants. Um, graduation ceremony was open to anyone who wanted to come and witness their work and their art show. 
uh, the goal for 2024 would be to have more public events in this space, in this MIA Metaverse campus. We cannot wait to host a variety of events and workshops in here. I think we're even going to move uh, part of our trainings within the Metaverse, which we haven't done um, in the last program. All the learning sessions were on um, a platform like Zoom called Butter, which is a bit more fun and fancy. And now we're really considering, given that the experience was a success, considering moving some parts of the learning experience within the Metaverse campus. Questions. This has been amazing. I, I can't imagine there aren't questions. Uh, who has questions for um, anyone? Leslie or Louisa? Actually, I have a question. What's the, uh, is there a purpose for the, the balls here no. in the background? Yeah. Good question, oh, Leslie. Leslie. I love you. Good question. <laughs> uh, so we used to have uh, an organization in our learning community, which was called the Seven Worlds. Each world was about a topic. So, for example, we had future of work, um, uh, AI and ethics. We had um, sustainability, but we're currently revamping our learning experience, so that might not be updated yet. Oh, and each one of these balls represented one of the worlds? Yes, the seven worlds. Okay, which one is the glittery one? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry, I put just, you on like, the spot there. the entire platform, I do not remember. <laughs> That's okay. We're, we're coming to the platform in a downtime. I understand that, yeah. And, and by the way, everybody, um, both Third Academy and Mia, um, this was actually kind of a last minute setup for them yeah. and they mm -hmm. pulled it together very, very yeah. quickly. Big, so I big, really, big you know, thank big you thanks. guys for, it's kind of like they're, they're letting us sneak in when the building's closed. And so, you know, I really appreciate that you guys did this. It's, 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 uh, yeah, because I, I, I had such a good experience here and I really wanted to share it and I appreciate you making that possible. So we have some awesome questions. Um, first, I have to say hi to Lara. Lara, oh my gosh, Lara and I go, like, we go back how long? I don't know. I, I mean, I feel like it's 20 years ago. Um, honestly, like so long ago and I'm so thrilled that she has joined us. Um, so we have a couple of questions. First of all, Kathleen asks, can you show the digital wallet? So maybe um, you could talk a little bit more, Stacy, or someone about the integration with the digital wallet. For us, once again, um, the metaverse is a tool and our worlds are, are accessories to a main platform. So when you enter through the main platform, that's where you integrate your wallet and that's where your journey really begins. Um, for select, um, communities like Mia, we, we, um, we also build out custom, uh, areas or bespoke campuses. We just did one for Bankless DAO. Um, but we are moving towards, um, stepping out of that space and letting each one of our individuals and each one of our communities and each one of our companies uh, be able to create their own instantly with toolkits that we're providing. So every day we're evolving, um, but your wallet integration is just a simple wallet integration like you would with MetaMask in any app. Um, you connect via MetaMask and you're good to go um, to be able to benefit from um, making purchases within our community. Um, as a Web3 based company, we will be doing um, a TGE in the future and we will have a token economy, but we will not launch that until after um, our platform is um, live. We are actually still in pre launch status and um, we have a good ecosystem to support with our token. Thanks, Stacy. Another awesome question is, is uh, and I think this is more for Louisa and her team, um, is your engagement rate higher in this immersive space, um, you know, more so than when you weren't in, in as an immersive space? Louisa, do you want to chat a little bit about that? Yeah, of course. Um, that's a very good question. And I feel like engagement level was similar, but there were, I think, technical limitations that would um how would you say sorry I'm French so sometimes I really have to look for my words in English apologize no <laughs> so there were technical limitations a lot of people were for example in Nigeria uh, and other countries where the internet connection was not that good and a lot of people did not have a great also devices so to be completely fair sometimes it was very heavy for them to access the 
uh, metaverse campus. So I feel like that's still somewhere we have to look out for in the next few years. I can't wait for metaverses to be less heavy technicality wise. It's still very um, consuming for devices that are not, you know, like MacBooks or really good PCs. Uh, but other than that, we've had a really great sign up rate for the events that we've done. We've done about four fields, um, sorry, field trips in the metaverse. And we've had to launch multiple sessions for each of that trips because we could only hold about 40 people at the same time uh, for each outing. So that was really cool. Yeah. Um, I'd love to talk about access because that's really important to us and underscore um, the value of using the mobile version of what we do. So everything that we have and everything we build is browser based and fully mobile. So we had over 2000 people in our own sessions that uh, were largely from the continent of Africa and Asia using mobile devices and did so successfully. Great, Stacey. And, and um, you know, the, this this particular example, I mean, you can tell the, gra the quality of the graphics here are, are, are very high as compared to some of the other um, kind of, I would say, lower, lighter, right, uh, lower grade um, quality platforms that that might be a little bit more accessible. Um, one platform that I'm familiar with is called Learn Bright. It's very light. Um, and they 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 built it that way on purpose, right? To be able to make sure that people didn't need high end anything to to access it a, across devices. So I think the industry is really seeing the importance of that, and we're moving in that direction. And um, these you know kind of these obstacles that I think have been true in the past are really no you know, no longer true. Um, many of these can you know hold hundreds, if not thousands, of participants at one time vis-a-vis uh, -vis instancing and sharding. And so there's a lot of different um, challenges that I think um, are, are really myths um, out there today. And it's just important as marketers that we stay updated, right, and really um, challenge ourselves to to stay current on the capabilities because they change all the time and, and they're constantly evolving. Any other questions? We're at time, everybody. Um, let's go ahead. I, um, thank you so much, uh, Leslie, for, for sharing and taking us on that um, tour. Uh, I'd love to wrap things up here. It's 101. And, um, of course, I have time to stay on a little bit um, longer if there are any additional questions. But big thanks and round of applause to Leslie Shannon. Oh. <laughs> big, big friend of the pub crawl. I can't wait to see you, Leslie, at AWE in June, um, yeah. maybe even sooner. So um, love that. And thank you so much to Stacy um, and the entire team from Third Academy. And also thank you so much, Louisa, and your team from Mia. You guys jumped in um, in, on such short notice to provide this very compelling use case. And I really appreciate it. It's a unique opportunity to have the platform and the client all here in the same room. So uh, thank you again, all of you. And thanks everybody that joined. Um, I, I will have the on-demand version of this ready to go in a day or so. And I, um, I'll post it on my YouTube channel so you can check it out. Um, any other questions or thoughts uh, before before we go enjoy our Fridays, Friday afternoon? Obviously, I want to say thank you so much for the invitation. I love presenting our use case. Um, absolutely loved working with Stacy and her team. It was amazing from start to finish. They've tailored the experience for us so many times. It was really, really great. You couldn't see the full extent of it right now because it, the, the, we're not using the space currently. But for the graduation ceremony, we had screens displaying our students' artwork. It was so, so good. But thank you for the invite. Uh, sharing is caring. So invite <laughs> women in your circles to come upskill on Mia. We have many networking events, learning opportunities. Just join us. Awesome, Lisa. Yeah. Such an amazing mission. And I just want to emphasize, you know, I'm sure you guys noticed that neither Third Academy nor Mia are XR developers, but they're able to actually use these tools to move forward. So, you know, we're getting to the point where you don't have to be an XR developer in order to be able to use these tools, which is great. The productization of these is a really important step in the maturity of our industry. Yes, I couldn't agree more, Leslie. It's like the word pressification of 3D is what's happening at the democratization of 3D, and it's coming fast, um, fast and furious. Uh, so, you know, we're all going to be empowered to be able to build 3D worlds um, very soon if we're not already. Okay, well, goodbye, everyone. Um, I'm going to stop the recording. Let me go ahead and do